Good morning, mighty men. In the year 1796, the Reverend Alexander Stewart was saved and started preaching the word in Moulin, Scotland. He started praying also with the first two converts and others gradually joined that gathering. And, and that's what laid the foundation for a revival that was coming. Soon there was a renewed excitement in his congregation and people started to really listen to his sermons, which now were about the fundamentals of Christian doctrine, the Lord's Supper and baptism, which helped to dispel a lot of superstitions the people had, and the need for a born-again experience. Then Stuart began to see conversions, several every week. And Stuart wrote to a friend and mentor, Reverend David Black, concerning what was being experienced. Quote, Oh, my dear brother, had you but been there with us for a week past, how your heart would have rejoiced. Such hungering and thirsting after communion with God, such genuine humility and contrition for sin, such devotedness to the Savior. Old converts quickened and new ones added to the Lord. Well, after Reverend David Black visited Moulin in the summer of 1800, he wrote this, Such a revival I never witnessed before. It is truly the doing of the Lord and marvelous in our eyes. Following the church services, several small groups would often form in the open fields with more mature believers where energetic conversations about the sermon and other spiritual topics were discussed. And from that very small village of Moulin, there were 70 that were born again the majority being under 30 years old. And there were also many children who placed their faith in Christ. And the revival's power spread th across that region, and the result was a virtual end to gossip and drunkenness and vulgar talk and the like, and the increased devotion to those scriptures and love for one another and godliness. That's what prayer and revival can do. Our Bible reading today is Second Chronicles, the first nine chapters. In chapter 5, verse 13, it says, And it was the duty of the trumpeters and singers to make themselves heard in unison in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And when the song was raised with trumpets and cymbals and other musical instruments in praise to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. This was when the temple was built. So that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. And then chapter uh, 7 and verse 13, when I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. Gracious God, let your glory cloud descend upon our houses of worship and our personal sanctuaries. Lord, we're praying that you would open our eyes to the judgment that you have poured out on America, that we would see this pestilence could not have come except by your will. Let us not miss the message of this moment, but lead us to these four things. Lord, humble us Humble us, Lord, that we would quit looking to ourselves, but look only to you. Help us to pray, really pray. Pray like we mean it, crying out to you, you who are our only hope. We want to seek your face and have transforming encounters with you and put within us a desperate desire to turn from our wicked ways and embrace your holiness, which is our only path to true victory. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.